A good day to everyone. In this video, we will be talking about uh, the probably the first drawing that I will be drawing uh, for machine drawing. And machine drawing, as you all know, it was a manual drafting uh, kind of a lab, wherein the students had to use the sheet and uh, drawing boards and all the instruments to make drawings. And uh, now the same lab has uh, actually shifted to CAD drawing instead of manual drafting because uh, obviously many of the companies are not using uh, manual drafting. So let us begin this first exercise wherein we'll just try to copy down uh, whatever we see here in this particular page. Uh, and uh, you know these uh, these are the different conventions used for hatching for different materials. So most probably, almost always, we'll be using the first convention only because most of the times the kind of materials we use for uh, making machine parts are going to be one of these. But of course, if you are using some other material, instead of using this particular hatch, you may have to use the other hatches which are visible here. So let us begin by drawing the same. So I should start by taking a new file. I can press Ctrl N or I can just place here for the new file. If you are getting the template option, uh, that's uh, that's probably not that good because we don't know what kind of template has what kind of settings in it. So I suggest that you just open randomly one of the templates and change this command, give this command called startup and change this value to uh, 1, change this value to 1 and press enter. Now if you take new file, you will get a slightly different uh, dialog box and this dialog box is called as the startup dialog box and here you have two options present here uh, and this is for start from scratch you have two options called imperial and metric imperial is mostly used by civil engineers and you know the units here will be in feet or inches if you choose metric you will get mm as your choice of unit and also the sheet size will also be a little bit, lar a little bit larger and it will be shown in terms of the mm as a unit uh, there are a few other options here. You can also go by the template if you still choose to do so. Uh, but you have the option of start from scratch, wherein this, these files, they don't have anything. No setting, no layers, no dimensions, or none of the settings will be fixed. You'll be starting fresh with an empty sheet. So you can start with a metric sheet. Yeah, so the, the metric sheet is now ready, and we are ready to you know, start drawing the objects. We choose some other me methods uh, you know, for taking the new file. What actually happens is uh, that you you end up with settings that uh, that that don't behave as I'm showing you here on the screen. So you just make sure you give the startup command, uh, change its value to one, and then take a new file with metric before you start drawing uh, the lesson from here. So first of all, I need a standard uh, you know rectangle for uh, drawing this particular thing. So I'll just go by 30 by 50. 30 as the height, 50 as the length. For that I'll just go here to the rectangle option. Click on the rectangle command. Click anywhere or here on the screen. Then when you click you get an option called dimensions. So the, these options will appear in the command line as well as in the right click menu. So from one of these options you can choose dimensions and then it will start asking you one by one the dimensions required to define the rectangle. So first it is asking us the length. So length I want is 50 and then it is asking us the width. The width that I want is 30. So if you have not chosen metric as the system of unit, if you give 50 and 30 as the units, the rectangle will probably be very big. It will be going out of the screen because uh, in the civil, in, in the imperial, uh, if you take the sheet size is uh, very small because uh, probably the units are different over there and so the rectangle that you draw with dimensions 50 and 30 will be very very big. So this is the standard rectangle in which I'll be doing the hatching. So let me just do the hatching and then I'll show you how to put all this text and all. So to put the hatching what you have to do is you should go to the home page and here you can see the button for hatch. So you just click on the hatch button and then go inside the rectangle and click over there. So after clicking just don't press escape because uh, this is a slightly different pattern that we have over here. We don't need this pattern. We have to change the pattern to something else. So you can uh, just go here to the hatch pattern 
and choose NC31 as a pattern that we want. So you can see this first rectangle I have completed it and uh, then what I have to do is I just have to copy this rectangle down. So just make a copy and uh, make sure you have the polar or ortho setting on before you turn you know uh, go down there. So I'll just get uh, a distance of 40 down here so that one centimeter gap is left in between and the same gap I want to be maintained for the remaining rectangle. So what I'll do, I'll just select this rectangle, give the copy command CO and then I'll pick this point over here on the first rectangle bottom corner and go on placing it in the bottom left corner of the new coming rectangles. So what this essentially does is it will maintain the same distance between every uh, two adjacent rectangles. So next we just have to go on hatching the different uh, patterns that we see around here. Uh, for this particular thing lead, zinc and tin we need a different kind of hatch. So once again I have to give the hatch command. You can just type H enter or you can always go from the draw menu bar. So I have just given H enter and then I will just click here, go to the pattern and choose the pattern that we want here. The same you can repeat whatever uh, whatever hatch types are available I'll directly you can choose them directly from there if there are some 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 of them are not available like in the case of glass you might have to actually draw it uh, using your mouse okay. you can actually draw it using your mouse and then use one side to yeah, you can go ahead and mirror it about that you can place uh, one or more of these. You can just copy and paste it. Fine. Copy paste. As I had told, you can use Control C, Control V, same as MS Office or any other place. And for this particular hatch, I'll just go with Hatch command. Click inside. Go for pattern again. And this time, I want a slightly different pattern. No, this is not the pattern I want. So there are a lot of patterns available here you might want to go through each one of them and choose whatever is suitable. So this particular hatch is actually fitting our uh, uh, our requirement in but the, the difference, the slight difference is that uh, these are inclined. So what I'll just do, I'll just change the angle to something like 45 degrees and yes this is exactly as it is looking over there. I'll just press escape, take a, the hatch command once again, click inside and go for hatch pattern once again. So this time the pattern that I want is slightly different. I'll have to just look through. So as you can see that kind of pattern is not available here. So I'll just go with NC31 and uh, I'll take two different angles. Uh, I'll first go with zero degrees. So that will give me the uh, lines at 45 degrees. Then once again I'll go for hatch, choose the same inside option and this time the angle that I'll give is uh, let us say 45 degrees, no no that's, that's not 45, it's minus 45 degrees to get the horizontal lines. So you can see I've uh, used two different types of hatchings to get this particular type uh, over there. Next for liquids what you can do is we can just draw a horizontal line over here, trim off the extra part. Excuse me. So next, you just have to you know put in uh, this dotted lines over there inside. So I'll just go with the hatch pattern and choose this one over here. Of course, the angle that we want here is zero degrees, so that it appears like water. Next, uh, yeah, we need here the pattern of the wood. The wooden pattern uh, is not readily available, ready made, it's not available here in the wood. So you might have to, you know, do a little bit of work around. So what you'll just have to do is you can uh, uh, first divide this space into a number of parts just as it is in the textbook. Okay. Okay, so this is going in the middle. So there are different patterns in each of these parts over here. So I can just go with uh, spline. You can go with spline and make a clicking marks. 
can also take another command called sketch. I don't know whether sketch is available here directly. No, I think it's not available. You just type in the command of sketch and uh, you can just click at one point and move your cursor. Fine. Again, press enter. Again, click. Fine. So, wherever your mouse is moving, there uh, the pattern starts appearing over there. Yeah. So, you can just click here and then just move here. Click enter and again another. Fine. So, you can continue drawing a lot of such patterns. So you can use sketch command or you can just use line command or spline command any of these will do there is no problem uh, you just have to create a pattern like this over there. Um, the next one I guess the number of rectangles are over I'll just copy one more from the same base keep it over here. Okay so for the concrete I think concrete is available as a hatch directly over here you just have to go there. And you can see here AR concrete so to get the concrete uh, hatch, you just have to give hatch command and uh, place it over here. So the hatch pattern that you have to choose is going to be AR concrete and ensure that you give a scale of 0.1 because uh, generally this uh, scaling factor will be very large for the screen that we are drawing in. And uh, that's it. That completes almost all the hatches that we required over here. Next, let us concentrate on the text message. So there are three types of text available in AutoCAD. There is a single line text, there is multi line text, and then there is the arc text. So we'll just go ahead and use simple text with the T enter command. So this will uh, essentially give us a multi line text. I'll just draw a rectangle over here and start typing inside it. So what we need over there is metal. Let's just put metals over there. Uh, let's try to ensure that it is exactly at the center. And you can see the handwriting, the, the font here is uh, very lineish. What we can do for changing the font is give the command st for style, text to style command. And the standard font, we need to change it to something more uh, beautiful. So you can go with the uh, shx type file and choose simplex.shx. So that is the font we'll be applying over here. That went, the advantage of using these fonts, mm -hmm. uh, especially in AutoCAD, is that we can control the thickness of the lines that, uh, that form this particular text. So that's why we have to use the SHX uh, fonts as far as possible in AutoCAD. Uh, once it is placed, you can just move it around and uh, you know, enter all the other texts. And just let me increase the size of this text. For increasing the size, I just have to select it and then from the menu, I can change the uh, height of this particular thing. You can also go to the properties toolbar by pressing PR enter and from there you can do it. Now the same text, I'll just uh, copy this, CO, and I'll place uh, this side somewhere. Now I have to, you know, uh, type all this matter over there. Okay, so this is not coming in the same line. I just have to use the keyboard. Okay, actually it's all in the same line, but uh, we just have to expand it in case it's not expanded already. Yeah, so the first one is complete. Yeah, okay, so you just have to be on the upper side. Then I'll just copy it down here. And this time I need to add all these. Just double click, select all and paste. Yeah, so this way you can go on uh, putting all the uh, thread text and that is there here exactly as it is here. You can also put in the heading if you want and uh, draw a few lines if you would like to do that. You can also use a uh, table command over here, like insert, we have the option of inserting a table. Yeah, it's there right here in the home uh, ribbon itself, you have the option of table. You select the option of table, you will get a lot of options and just need three columns and a number of rows, data rows I need around, okay, let's go with eight. If we need more, we can always increase it. So I'll just place it somewhere here. Place it somewhere here. And I'll just have to you know, select this and start expanding it. Fine. So just expand it conveniently. 
And then of course you can change the column length by just dragging one of the lines. And uh, this is how you will get a table. If you don't like the table, uh, you can always go with the other methods. Like uh, you can, you know, uh, go ahead and create uh, lines in that particular shape, and uh, you will have this diagram complete over there. So while saving the diagram, you just uh, save it as a DWG file. If you are planning to open this file with an older version of AutoCAD, you have to save it with the the, uh, the, the older version. But if you don't uh, have that kind of problem. If you have the latest version always available to you, you can go with the latest one. So just save it uh, in the documents or in the T drive with uh, your name. I'll just put in my name and save it. So that's it for this video. Uh, we'll be doing more in the coming videos. Stay in touch with us, like our video, uh, subscribe to our channel, and of course, uh, share this video with your friends as well. Thank you.